is an all-in-one computer really an all-in-one if you have to plug in an army of peripherals with wires snaking all over the place? Well, the Dell XPS 27 promises to knock at least some of the clutter off your table with its apparently audiophile grade 10 speaker sound system. Well, I like the sound of that, but can it deliver on the hype? Let's find out. The Master Keys Pro keyboard lineup from Cooler Master is available in three sizes, each in white or RGB flavors. Check them out at the link below. Only a single cable is required to run the XPS 27. Everything but the mouse and keyboard, including the power supply, is contained inside its sharp, professional form factor. And this thing is pretty darn sexy, especially from the front. And it feels pretty good too, thanks to its hefty aluminum construction. The touch version is a whopping 37 and a half pounds, but if that's a little heavy for your tastes, the non-touch version is eight pounds lighter, though it lacks this really cool articulating arm that allows the display to go from five degrees down all the way to completely flat, something even the Microsoft Surface Studio does not do. We do need to be careful about comparing this to the Surface Studio though, because Dell positions the canvas monitor as their studio killer. But since we're at it, <clears throat> it should be noted that the XPS 27 screen takes considerably more force to adjust than the studio. On the right, you'll find the power button along with a USB 3 port with power share. And on the left, we have a welcome SD card slot and a headphone jack. Above the 27 inch screen is a four microphone array that allows you to summon Cortana from up to 15 feet away. Then below it, a 720p infrared camera and two infrared emitters for Windows Hello and the XPS 27's claim to fame, the 10 speaker sound system, which I will explain more about after I show you the rest of the IO, which, uh, uh, hold on, I'll get it. it <sighs> Okay, yeah, unfortunately, getting at the little cave that contains the rest of the plugs requires the reach around technique and some clumsy fumbling. But once you get in there, you'll find that your shiny new AIO is fairly well endowed. It's got gigabit ethernet, display port out, and HDMI out, two Thunderbolt 3 USB type C ports, audio line out, and four USB 3 ports plus a bonus USB hidden below this removable panel, the perfect spot for the dongle for the surprisingly excellent included wireless keyboard that even features high-end multi-device functionality and the strikingly mediocre mouse. This is also the place where you'll find the only two screws holding the back cover on, and then the three more that reveal the motherboard, making this machine shockingly easy to upgrade. Not that we would want to. The base model priced at 1349 has a Core i5 6400 processor with onboard graphics, but most models are equipped with a Core i7 6700 with either AMD R9 M470X or M485X graphics. Our 16 gig SKU has two slots available, allowing for an easy upgrade path to 32 gigs and a total of three storage bays, one M.2 NVMe with its own freaking fan, which is great for preventing thermal throttling and two, two and a half inch for additional SSDs or hard drives. So that's pretty cool. And so are the thermals. We taxed the FPU at the same time as running the fuzzy donut of death and although <laughs> it did reach the point where it sounded like it was ready for liftoff, the CPU leveled off at 85 degrees Celsius and never throttled. I feel pretty good about Dell's thermal solution here. Bottom line then, the XPS 27's performance is suitable for 4K media consumption, assuming no DRM restrictions that require a seventh gen processor, and even photo and video editing and creation which the 3840 by 2160 4K IPS display will handle nicely. It suffers from Best Buy TV syndrome a little bit out of the box with overcooked reds and 
some, somewhat of a green cast on the whites and grays, but with calibration, this display could easily be used by professional photo editors. It's available in both touchscreen and non-touchscreen flavors and boasts wide viewing angles, a brightness of 300 plus nits, and over a billion colors. And the boasting is justified. This is a very good display. It covers 99.95% of the Adobe RGB color space with spot on color temperature and gamma out of the box and one of the best contrast ratios we've ever tested. Which makes it especially tragic that Dell neglected to include an HDMI input. So if you were hoping to get some more mileage out of your XPS 27 as a monitor, once the computer hardware is obsolete, you will be sorely disappointed. Which I guess leads us perfectly into our next topic. If you're gonna put a dedicated graphics card in it, we're gonna run some games. Our unit with the AMD M470X and four gigs of GDDR5 had Deus Ex Mankind Divided running at 32 FPS on low, with Rise of the Tomb Raider averaging 48 FPS on low and 38 on medium. But it should be noted that that's at 1080p, one quarter of the screen's resolution. Both games were absolute slideshows when we tried them at 4K. But in Dell's defense, they never told us that this thing was built for gaming. Dell is emphasizing that every single person who buys one of these is getting the utmost in both display and audio quality, a first in the AIO category that's dominated by the iMac, a computer with its FaceTime microphone on the back. So how does it sound? Actually, pretty friggin' decent. It's got good articulation with clear highs, and the width of the soundbar gives it a noticeable stereo effect. It's not perfect. I'm not sure if the marketing accounts for the drop-off in sound quality when it nears full volume, and the bass is present, but obviously not nearly as low as could be achieved with a separate subwoofer, but that doesn't mean we weren't really, really impressed. The speakers are great for rocking out while you work, watching movies, or even providing background music when you have a few people over. You know, if you think about it, going out to eat not only is really expensive, it's actually not that efficient. You spend all this time driving when you could have just been preparing a meal and cleaning up after it. So Blue Apron solves that problem. They allow you to create delicious chef-inspired recipes at home by delivering all the farm fresh ingredients you need right to your doorstep in exactly the right proportions. So no extra trips to the grocery store and no waste from unused ingredients. They offer two types of plans, the two person plan and the family plan. And there is no commitment whatsoever. You can skip or cancel at any time. All the meals can be prepared in 40 minutes or less, and you don't even have to stress about like, what if I'm not home and they deliver my food to my doorstep because they ship in these refrigerated containers that keep everything fresh. They've got a wide variety of recipes and they're always adding new dishes to the menu every week. So check it out. The first 100 people will get three free meals on their first Blue Apron order by using the link in the video description. So thanks for watching guys. If you dislike, dislike. If you liked, then like. If you really liked, get subscribed. Check out the link to where to buy the stuff we featured in the video description and check out the link to our t-shirt store and our community forum, which you will find in the video description as well. Now that you're done doing all that, you're probably wondering what to watch next. So may I suggest one of our videos?